Hi, I'm Phil Brown um, from Transition Town. Um, I'm very much the new boy, so, and I know there are lots of people far more qualified than I am to speak, but nevertheless I'm speaking as a new boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the Transition Towns movement in WA and beyond. The Transition Town movement takes the issues of peak oil, fossil fuel usage and climate change and treats them as one, which results in the stark fact that we have to change how we live. It's an organisation that stresses ecological health and social justice. It also rethinks the scales on which we live from the global to the local. It's an organisation which stresses resilience, which for its purposes are an ability to withstand shock by the community having options. Community development in the form of economic development connected with food supply, energy supply and education and seeing all three as being intrinsically connected. It's not an organisation of protest but one of encouragement to change and attempt at inclusivity. At its heart is working with local communities and local government to achieve environmental and social goals. There is an emphasis on producing local foods, in some instances local power, and others a local currency runs alongside that of the national currency. Its history? Well, Transitions Town started in 2006 in the UK. It now has a presence in 46 countries with over 1,100 individual initiatives throughout the world. Within WA, there are 15 transition towns, of which 11 are in Perth. And Perth holds the distinction of having the greatest number of transition towns within an urban setting anywhere in the world, which is interesting to, <laughs> to work on because <laughs> um, there's no fixed model of a transition town but most are in small what we would term market towns or towns with a connection with agriculture or a history of agriculture so the urban setting is a bit unusual but not completely in order that the movement as a whole has some continuity a list of principles have been devised. And I'll quickly, oh, here they are, oh, wonderful. <laughs> um, right, I'll, I'll just do the headlines of these rather than reading all the way through. Um, we respect resource limits and create resilience. We promote inclusivity and social justice. We want to increase the chances of all groups in society to live well. We adopt subsidiarity. The intention of the transition model is not to centralise or control decision making, but rather to work with everyone. We pay attention to balance. We create space for reflection. We explore different ways of working which engage our heads, hearts and hands enable us to develop a collaborative, trusting relationship. And I think trust is the important thing, and trust has been so much eroded in all that happens about us that to actually trust a stranger has become uncommon. Radical. Yes. Radical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we are part of an experimental learning network. We will be open about our processes and will actively seek and positively, uh, we will, and positively respond to feedback, not actively seek positive feedback. But to the, to, um, we, share, we freely share ideas and power because each community takes ownership of the process themselves. We co collaborate and look for syn synergy to have a greater impact together than we do as individuals. We foster positive visioning and creativity. Our primary focus is not on being against things, but in developing and promoting positive possibilities. 
And just to add on to that, in terms of, of guidance, there are seven essential ingredients. Um, healthy groups, in short, healthy groups will, which pays attention to our individual and collective heart, hands and minds. Vision, imagine the future you want to create, which we've done a fair bit of within um, um, the last couple of days or the last day. Um, community involvement, embedded embed transmission transition in your community by developing relationships beyond friends and natural allies and we can all get a bit clicky and all that sort of thing and opening up and making ourselves available in some ways um, is quite important um, practical projects develop inspirational products projects that change your community and build your community and build transition. Be part of the movement, reflect and celebrate. Okay. Just, yes, I just want the last one. Well, I just want my the one in there. That's it. That can go as well. Okay. Personal. This is my yes. <laughs> Phil's going to give us his personal experience. I'm just going to leave this up for you, and so you can just see how the different things that each group does will involve more than one of those at a time usually. So you'll be able to see when he talks that that there's uh, visioning going on, or there's community development going on, or that it's part of a movement. Okay. I want to give you an example of inclusion and openness that Transition Town openly gives. I've got a confession to make, but I've already told you I'm new to environmentalism. Um, and I've always been a bit put off by enthusiastic gardeners. How um, did you end up? I'm a petrol head and spent most of my free time with sporty cars and racing cars. But over the time, or over a life, I've heard of Rachel Carson's and the Silent Spring, of Schumacher and Small is Beautiful, when IT used to stand for intermediate technology rather than information technology. And of course, of recently, Naomi Klein and No Logo and latest book is um, This Changes Everything, and many other books. Um, so I had to explore my authentic self could I leave these double lives or are they double lives? And those are things that people have to think about outside of the movement. Um, so what I did, so exploring my authentic self, I gate crashed a transition town meeting. By the fact that I'd chosen to come there, I was immediately accepted and felt right at home. I'd crossed a barrier and been accepted. So, what have I seen in the last six months that could be seen as representing Transition Town? I've attended six monthly film nights that are held at various transition venues. This let me know that there's a varied audience of between 50 and 100 persons who are part of the general community who would turn up. And we get to meet new people. I found that the local council had been paying for the not inconsiderable license fees for the films on multiple showing licenses. Um, these films were shared with other transition towns. That the landlord of the pub where the film shows took place provided the venue and projection system free, as long as we bought a few drinks. <laughs> I've attended a soup night where another local landlord provided soup for a hundred persons and staff turned up on their night on the night when the pub didn't normally open um, and made no charge. The landlord was very advanced and had a stock of paper straws in. <laughs> a hundred donors provided a pot in excess of a thousand pound dollars um, to help start a sustainable project. I helped man a checkpoint and a learning station which was making newspaper bin liners. 
in a great race or a goat run um, for fathers and children as they gallivanted around the neighbourhood finding clues and checkpoints. I became aware of the community gardens movements, all of which appear to have a lot to offer in terms of knowledge and social exchange and make an impact on the local vegetable and herb economy. That's again going back to those very small things that we think are insignificant, but it's just another few little cuts that, that are occurring. Uh, the council has allowed the planting of verges with crops and Transition Town is offering to plant and tend for those who are unable to for reasons of health. Um, I've attended the Streets and Laneways Festival organised by the council that saw a major artery shut. The streets were filled with stalls promoting local groups and business products, producing a wonderful community atmosphere. Our stalls had ceilings, seedlings, little free libraries, food exchange and free food, and an opportunity for young persons to do woodwork. There are many similar events promoting sustainability in communities, such as the Grote Street Festival and the Mundaring Blue Fire Skies Festival. Plastic Free July was held at a local shopping centre. This provided an opportunity to liaise with businesses there. Um, the manager of the shopping centre could not have been more helpful in providing us with um, prominent advertising, uh, a prominent space to display and demonstrate um, in the middle of the shopping centre all the things that we were doing. And one of the, some of the things we were doing were making newspaper bin liners, beeswax wrappers, boomerang bags and a um, composting demonstration of composting equipment and also the repair cafe which proved um, very popular because there was only about 30 minute waiting time sometimes for people to see. The composting hub, a joint venture between transition towns and the council was started six weeks ago. It appears as the um, it appears to be very successful as the original number of food scrap bins has trebled from three to nine. The resultant compost will be offered to contributors and an impact will be made on what goes to landfill. However, what has been missed in this is we're reaching only a small part of the demograph. People at either end of the socio-economic demog demograph are missing and we're working on that. Right now to the nice bit. Imagining looking back from 2035. So it is now 2035. To the north, south, east and west of Perth Three large areas of permaculture have been established. The three areas are established around composting hubs that take all the material from Perth that is suitable for composting. With consultation and agreement from the first Australians, areas of bush have been converted into fertile ground and clusters of permaculture developed. They are run as cooperatives and labour is shared between the individual clusters as seasonal and meteorological condi conditions see fit. A universal basic wage is in operation, but many workers from Perth choose to take vacations or a brief change in their lives by working in the permaculture clusters for holidays with pay. Changing activity and becoming closer to your food source is now recognised as an aid to mental health and physical health. To get the compostable waste out of Perth and the food grown in the areas of permaculture back to Perth, three narrow gauge multi fueled railways have been built with pick up points on many um, on the way in and out. Passengers, workers, and holiday makers are able to use the trains with suitable carriages. Small engineering workshops are set up at all terminals of the lines and those 
at the permaculture end will be able to specialize in some aids towards useful permaculture. Food miles are now limited and Perth, as Perth moves toward food sufficiency. Many small companies have been set up around Perth to safely exploit lithium-ion battery industries. It has now been understood that the greatest sense of human flourishing can only be achieved where individuals can operate with autonomy and trust and are given genuine support in doing so. With this in mind, all organisations, be they manufacturing or service, have been limited to 200 persons with no outsourcing for service jobs. Education will have taken a great leap and a clear understanding of the phenomena of media amplification will be understood. Students have been watching historical footage of Channel 7 News and understanding that those of a certain age living in the first two decades of the 2000s, lived in a state of fear, terrified of a knock on the door and never venturing out after dark because of king hits and road rage. The students are told of the efforts that the channel went to to find stories by developing specialised editing techniques and soliciting phone camera footage. Also on the curriculum is a study of the emotional effect and stages of purchasing novelties and fashion items. It is explored, in this is explored the temporary feeling of superiority as each student relives oh, openly the ups and downs of old-fashioned consumerism. That we can laugh at the absurdities, absurdities of the bustle and the powdered wig and the codpiece of the 16th, 17th and 18th century enables us to laugh at our own vanities, no matter from where they come. Thank you. Right. Thank you.